Tale of Kanzara Zhao Dev Circuit Studios puts entire team on notice for redundancy. Company is looking for funding to finance its next project. So, man, they're still laying off people. Yeah. So, so what, have, what have you heard about this one? Uh, I just know that I know they laid off a few people when they launched the game. So now they're, yeah, clearly the game didn't perform enough. So it, now the entire game dev team is on hold. So yeah, uh, now they're look. I think they're looking for funding for their next game, which I imagine is like, I, I they describe it as edgy or something like that. It's probably going to be more woke stuff. So yeah, good luck on that. And if it flops again, you're going to have to lay off people again. <laughs> That's how it's going to yeah. happen. Yeah, if you keep serving DEI BS and not, you know, making actually a good game, then you're just going to keep losing money. You're just going to keep cl- ending up closing shop and rely on taxpayer money to finance your game. Yeah. Yo, Gooch. Yeah, I'll, I'll check my email. I got, uh, I'll, I'll check it out. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, all right. So let's go and read this right over here. I uh, see uh, Surger Studios, the developer behind the tale of Kenzara Zhao, announced that they had to put our entire team on notice for redundancy as it's pausing the works of its games division while trying to secure funding for its next project. Surgeon described this potential game as a darker, edgier, and more visceral than our first game. It's supposed to feature the same high octane combat and cultural depth as Kenzale, uh, sorry, Tales of Kenzara Zhao. The team has finished a prototype of this title and will release a couple of exciting updates for the Tales of Kenzara Zhao before uh, going on hiatus, according to the announcement. So Kenzara Zhao is the one that was it. Was this the one that's supposed to be a white person, and then they changed it to a black person? No, 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 no. That, that that's a different one. That's uh, that's Lintlop. Oh my God! They're, they're <laughs> all getting there. All of these woke teams are sort of becoming the same thing. They're all they them's now. They're all non-binary they them's. Okay. <laughs> oh yeah, it's God, a it's man. a it's a Metroidvania game that didn't look that bad, but they're yeah, it's they were pushing the representation rather than talking about the game and its features and what makes it unique, but. Well, that made it unique. It's it's DEI driven, and that killed the game instantaneously. So now they're Man. they're they're looking yeah they're looking for a new means of financing their next game, which is probably going to be terrible unless someone else takes over and actually makes it good. Man, you see, a surgeon described the potential game as a okay. I already read that shit. I see the studio is asking for potential publishing and funding partners to contact yeah. it and take a look at prototype in order to fill. Say, how, well, Here's what they need to do. They need to just. I'm not sure if, if Tales of Kanzara, if they worked with SBI, right? With Sweet Baby. I'm not sure if they did. But if they did, they need to get the fuck away from them as far as possible. It's because anything that is linked to Sweet Baby Inc. No one's going to buy it. No one's going to play it. Now, I have a feeling that Sweet Baby Inc. is going to somehow hide their um, affiliation with these companies. All right. Uh, but the thing is, it's all, like we have like what Cabrutus is doing that uh, DEI detected. Uh, we need to see all these gaming companies show these are our backers. These are our consultants and stuff like that. So we can see it's because as you know, as consumers, we need to see what we're buying, what we're getting into, right? It's sort of like when we buy uh, soda, when we buy drinks or we buy food, there's a nutritional fact at the end, you know, at least here in the U.S., right? You know, like there's a nutritional fact on, on you know, what the ingredients are in the food, what ingredients, you know, like for, for me, I have, I have this liquid death over here. You know, this is a, this is a water and, um, you know, if there's any additives or preservatives that goes into the food, you know, that will, as a consumer, we should know that same goes for this as games. We as consumers should know what this game is about. We should know who's working on it. We, we need to know the ingredients that goes into making this game, right? I'm not saying that we need to know everyone's names. That's what the credits are for, but we should be able to know before buying it so we can make an informed decision is because so many times that I have, you know, seen a game that looks really, really cool and I go into it and I got a big old dick in the mouth, right? And I don't want that anymore. I'm, I mean, I don't want that, okay? So the thing is that every time you just, like, like we pre-order something, we get excited, we pre-order something, you know, uh, you know, and it always get a big dick in the mouth and we don't want that. So mm-hmm. 
Let's go over here and see. Good luck, have fun. All Oliver, uh, sorry, Oliver Brandt wrote in the Tales and Kanzara Review that it's a game that breaks a lot of conventions with the Metrovania genre, focusing more on exploration and outfitting you with the most of your abilities from the get go. In a crowded Metrovania landscape, Tales of Kanzara stands out as one of the best in recent years. Is anyone playing that right now? Is that on Steam? Yes. Let's go and check out that. Let's go check out the Steam charts right now. Tales of Kinzara. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that they be it. Here's the thing: if you check Awakening Nine right now, it has two. 285 all time peak, so it even has less than Tales of Kenzara. Oh my god, and, th dude, and that one costed a lot right more. <laughs> man, yeah, the, these DEI games, man, they're, they're really fastest way to burn money. <laughs> oh, shit. this is this is so bad, dude. Holy yeah. crap, man! But uh, but yeah, good. Rest in piss, you won't be missed. I don't care about this game. Never heard about this game until you know doing the whole like research about like woke games. Now, here's the thing. Let's say the gameplay is really good. If there's woke stuff in it, you're gonna drive a lot of people away. Now, Gray, did you did you did you play Hades too? You did, right? Yeah, yeah. I I made a short video about it here. Yeah. Did you like it? Yeah, I haven't gotten deep into it, but I did like my first play, first impressions of it. Yeah, so I played um, the demo. I played the demo, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. But the thing is that no matter what, there's always going to be that that taste in the back of your mouth that you know it's woke. It's like, oh, this game is good, but it sucks that it's woke. But the thing is, people aren't going to give it a chance knowing that it's woke. Like, yeah, especially people that's who are like very gotten. well, yeah, especially when people are very, very well versed into like the you know pop culture and the culture war and stuff like that, like video games and movies. When they hear that this game is woke, they're not even gonna, they're not even gonna touch it, they're not even gonna give it a chance. Let's say Tales mm -hmm. of Kanzara has a very, very good gameplay, very good gameplay loop, cool design, good you know, platforming and features and stuff like that. But knowing that the game was woke, people aren't even gonna touch it. So, yeah, I, I, I. That's a shitty thing, right? It's like, that's the reason why get woke, go broke. It's because when your game is like, oh, your game has to do a sweet baby ink. I'm not, I'm not playing it. I'm not, I'm not even going to give it a chance. Right. I, I, I played God of War Ragnarok without knowing it was part of sweet baby ink. So, right. But now we do know now, we, now I, like immediately is it, is it, is it woke? Oh, this movie came out. Is it woke? Penguin is out. It's doing really, really good. Is it woke? That's the first thing that people will ask now. Thanks for checking out this segment of the Project Egg Row podcast. If you like what we do here, please like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you will know next time when we go live. We do go live every Saturday at 8 p.m. Once again, we are just getting started. Tons of more video to come. Thanks, and we'll see you guys next time.